All right, guys, we are here for the fifth and final match with the crazy list that you see on screen. And I don't want to talk too much about the list. Let's just jump straight into the match and see how we can do. We are currently three and one. So we're looking either to go infinite here with our three and two record or maybe to get a little bit more for our time with the four and one record. We'll see. Regardless, I'll see you guys in the games. It looks like we have a match. On the play, of course, is always great. And we have a hand that contains an amulet and a titan already. We have several land sources, including a mimic. This hand is only lacking a bounce land, really. And we're on the play, so we're going to be able to play out this dryad before our opponent gets to their third turn, which is pretty good. I think we probably keep this. A Garen Brig makes this hand very good. A Bounce Land makes this hand very good. We can just play Florahedron on turn two. We have a lot of things going here, so I'm willing to give it a shot. I do apologize. There should be some barking in the background that I will not be able to edit out. Um, unfortunately, the dog here is making some noise, so hopefully you can bear with me. What? Our opponent is playing Balaged Recovery in their deck. Surely this can't be good news, right? This has got to be Oops All Spells, or um, it could be that um, uh, Charbelcher deck. I mean, we're definitely ramping ourselves here, getting this Floor Heater into play. So let's just go ahead and do that. Pass it back. Hopefully our hand is faster than our opponent's. We'll find out. We don't have a, a Vesuva to copy Valakut here, so that might end up proving pivotal here. Uh, this is going to be a Blood Moon, isn't it? Actually, we're pretty well set up against a Blood Moon here with our double basic land Florahedron draw, so maybe that wouldn't even be the worst thing that could happen to us. I guess our opponent, worst case scenario, could just Charbelch us immediately, recross the paths. Our opponent gets to stack their deck here, putting whatever they want on top. Okay, so we're probably dead, I would imagine. Let's see. I'm not seeing any mainboard Blood Moons here, actually. Which is pretty good. We are likely to just lose to Charbelter this upcoming turn. No, there's a Blood Moon. Okay, so there are Blood Moons in our opponent's deck. I'm not really sure how we're supposed to play around our opponent's uh, cards here, though. We don't have a Ghost Quarter to search for to cut them off of a land here and stop them maybe from comboing off. So that's kind of unfortunate. H how do we know which card they clashed? I I they revealed Turn Timber Symbiosis. So we can choose to put this Dryad on the bottom, which I think we do have to. We need a Bounce Land here. Yeah, I don't. I don't even know. <laughs> We just have to hope we're not totally dead. Um, yeah, so I mean, I guess we're just playing Valcut and Dryad and uh, just calling it a day. Just doing as we do, you know, hoping that we're not dead in multiple turns. Or dead in one turn, I should say, uh, to our opponent's uh, Charbelter thing that they're doing. And yeah, we'll attack them for the one because why not? And then this upcoming turn, we can play Mimic as a land and just cast Titan and get second Valakut bounce land and maybe kill them that way. Or second Valakut and Han Weir and then attack and then get more triggers. So our opponent needs to do their Charbelter thing this very turn. And if they do not, then I think we should be able to present lethal. But I think that most likely we'll be able to do what they need here. They did get to formulate the ideal hand here by stacking their deck with a recross the paths. So two Simeon Spirit Guides, a uh, Ritual, Iron Crag, Iron Crag Feet, cast Charbelcher, and kill us. Okay, well, um, Charbelcher is a rough matchup. Not much more to say about that game one. And uh, there's not going to be much more to say about the games two and three here either if we get to a game three. Obviously, we want the Ghost Quarter. Force of Vigor and Rex Sage for Blood Moons. Explosives probably doesn't matter. Um, excavator getting back Ghost Quarter could be good, I suppose. So let's uh, let's keep that one. 
And, uh, yeah, the rest of our cards don't matter. Let's see. I could see trimming a turn timber. Um, we probably need to have actual primeval titans in play. Uh, Balaged recovery is not looking like it's going to be particularly relevant for the uh, grinding aspect, as we're not really grinding at all. Florhedron does actually play around Blood Moon, which could be relevant if our opponent mulligans to a hand that just casts an early Blood Moon, but we're able to get a Florhedron into play before that Blood Moon, then perhaps we can play around it. Bog seems irrelevant. Um, two more cards. Let's see. We could just cut the other two Balagads, and I don't hate that. Sure. I mean, we could use Balagad to get back, like, a, a force or something, but to be honest, I think that if we do draw and cast a single force, then we should probably be planning to win the game and not just buy back a force with a Balagad, so I think this is probably fine. Courser's not great here either, though, in all honesty. We might just be cutting Courser's in order to have Balagads as potential land sources. I don't hate that. Let's keep in a couple Balagads and trim these Coursers. In fact, I think I'd rather not have Courser at all. We'll keep the Turn Timber as well. And I guess a third Balagad. It's probably more relevant to get back a Force or a Negate or something with a Balagad than it is to just play a Courser, so submit. Also, we can't even cast Courser through Blood Moon, most likely, so. Alright, we'll play first, of course. Not that that helped us at all last time, <laughs> as we have a hand here with only two lands and a triple Primeval Titan. Uh, nope. Uh, nope. This one's not going to do it either. Alright, um, I guess we're keeping. And we can get rid of this Hun Weir. I mean, it's an untapped source. Eh, maybe not on that one. Let's, uh, let's bring that one back. We probably need the Han Weir to play Dryad eventually. I don't want to get rid of Dryad. Alright, so we can get rid of a Garen Brig here, perhaps, and maybe Bounce Land is not the worst. We can go turn one, Castle, turn two, Growth Chamber, turn three, Tap Land, Hold Up, Negate, or just play a Han Weir and Dryad, depending on what happens. We have no way to beat Blood Moon. Um... I guess Hanweir gives us the ability to cast Dryad on three, but I don't know if we're going to want that, to be honest. Um, I guess we do want to have that option, so let's just get rid of this World Turf. I don't know, it could be wrong, but to be honest, there's not a whole lot that we could do right in this matchup, so... I'm going to go ahead and pull the chat back up here, just so that you can see the entirety of the game log. Alright, and yeah, let's just lead on this Garen Brig. We can cast a Grazer if we draw it. And get a little bit of ramping. And we'll see if we're dead on turn 2. Last time I played against Belcher, that's exactly what happened in game 2, is uh, our opponent just, uh, you know, did the thing and killed us on turn 2. That's pretty good content, right? Just getting slaughtered immediately, without having made any uh, useful plays at all. Alright, well, let's uh, hold up our only interaction here. This matchup is as bad as the Neoform matchup. <laughs> I mean, we're doing what we can. We're not going to cast Dryad this upcoming turn, unless something crazy occurs. Tap land, go. That is not the kind of crazy that I was thinking of, so... Recovery. That's a green source that we can use to activate Garen Brig. I suppose we might want to recovery back the negate, though. Eh. Eh. We're going to need to be able to activate Garen Brig to get our Titan into play, I'm thinking. One, two, three, four, five, six. So even if we didn't play the uh, recovery as a land, we'd still be one short of casting Titan. So I think that we probably are supposed to put out the recovery here. Although, to be honest, maybe our priority number one should just be not dying. And recovery helps us with that plan, so I'm just going to play the Garen Brig here and pass it back. Of course, if our opponent has Pact of Negation or Veil of Summer or something stupid like that, then there's not much we can do about it anyways, so... Yep. Turn Timber Symbiosis untapped. Okay, so our opponent's casting something here. Blood Moon. Simian Spirit Guide. They're going for the feet. Okay. They can only cast one more spell, so let's just uh, negate it. <laughs> nope. 
hey guys, the negates, they came in clutch. You know how I said I put them in the sideboard specifically for combo matchups like ad nauseum? Well, here we are. And are we just getting back the negate? Or are we committing the dryad? Like, what are we even doing? I don't even know. I guess we can recovery back negate and hold up negate if we don't draw a titan this upcoming turn. So I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna slam everything, I suppose. Sure, amulet. Why not? Radiant fountain. Sure. Yeah, let's just let's just do it all, guys. Dryad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Here goes the battlements too. Okay, okay. If we draw a Titan, we can cast it, and Titan might win us the game. Metamorphose. Okay, and that's fine. Uh, we're not doing anything this turn, so uh, let's just yield here. So if we draw a Titan and cast it, we can get Valcut and Hanweir and get two triggers from Valcut. Haste and attack get second Valcut and another land, which will be two lands times two Valcuts, four more triggers, so six total, which would be three each would be 18 already. So we have them dead just on Valcut triggers if we top deck a Titan. Uh, this Clash is going to help us find a Primeval Titan, hopefully. If it's not a Titan or Summoner's Pack, then we're bottoming it, and if it is, then we're putting it on top. And that will be that. It'll be a really fun game, you see. Let's see. Anything new? Anything new? I don't see anything that stands out to me. Let me know if there's something I'm missing. We see some boils. That's interesting. <laughs> our opponent is playing a deck with boil. You know, the, the all-in combo deck that can kill your opponent on turn two, you know, and just tries to set up a recross the pass to set the top of their deck. Yeah, they're playing Boil. That makes total sense. Alright, we have a Turn Timber Symbiosis on the top of our deck. And so does our opponent, interestingly enough. Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That is not going to find us a Titan, so on the bottom it goes. As our opponent plays, tap land, pass. All right, tighten off the top one time. Tighten. Tighten. <laughs> or another negate. You know, that's cool. That's cool. So are we recovering back this negate? Is that crazy? I mean, I'm kind of inclined to do it. What else are we doing with our mana? I suppose we could lose our dryad, perhaps, and need this recovery. Hmm. I'm not playing around anything. I'm just getting this negate back. And attacking for the two damage that we have. And passing it back. Here goes everything. See if our opponent is killing us this upcoming turn. Now, choosing what spell to counter could be important. If our opponent casts an Iron Crag feat again, then we'll just, again, counter the thing that they cast after the feat, since they can't Defend it with, a, like, a counterspell or something. If our opponent leads on something stupid like um, Veil of Summer, I guess we could counter the Reforge this hole. Is that crazy? I don't think that's crazy. I think that's, I think that's pretty good. I suppose if our opponent has another recross the pass, then we get punished a little bit, but I don't know how many Reforges they even play, so let's just counter this one. They're less likely to have something to fight over it here, so... And I highly doubt that we're dead immediately. Our opponent would have just killed us the other turn when they cast Recoffs the, the Paths. So, alright. Titan. Off the top. <sighs> that is not a Titan deck. Okay, okay. Holding it together. Swinging in. Passing it back. Our opponent doesn't know that we have a another Negate lying in the weights. Um, already these recoveries showing their salt. If this had been a Corsair of Crufix, we might have been long dead. Okay, deck. Primeval Titan. Or Summoner's Pact. Primeval Titan or Summoner's Pact. Come on, boil? Uh, no. Well, I mean... Ghost Quarter. Sure. We will do the old attacking thing and uh, determine whether or not we should fire off this ghost quarter. I don't know what our opponent might have left on top, but it seems prudent 
to go score to them now. I mean, they can always elect not to search. Yeah, it says may search. So they might just leave whatever card they put on top on top. Um let's see, Iron Crag feet adds how much mana? Seven red. So if they have an Iron Crag feet and a Charbelcher, then Ghost Courting them doesn't stop them from casting and activating Charbelcher at all. So that's not a factor. Um Let's see, is there anything that Ghost Quarter does here that would be useful. It doesn't stop them from casting Mana Morphos. Nah, I think we just save it for the extra Valakut triggers if we end up getting to that point. Recross the paths. Okay. Let's look at these 95 cards revealed, you know, because oh, why not? Our opponent does have a second before the soul, I would think. Maybe not, maybe not. Although, at this point, they don't need it. They just need to cast a Charbelter and us to not be able to answer it or top deck a Titan and then activate it the turn after, so. Like, okay. <laughs> It must be very annoying for our opponent to have to stack each card individually like this. And I apologize to you guys at home if you have to wait through all of this. Perhaps if it's too long, I'll edit the video. Our top card is a forest. That ain't gonna cut it. On the bottom it goes. Okay, okay, okay. Big draw, no whammies, no whammies, and... Feel the dead. That one's kind of a whammy. Um. Yeah, that one's not great. <laughs> okay, uh, sure, play it. Why not? Ooh, and untap it, too. That's value, guys. Swing with the Dryad. On our opponent's upkeep. Let's, uh, let's, uh, rough them up a little bit. We'll see if we can catch them searching off of the Ghost Quarter on their upkeep. That's our only hope. Hit the green source, because oh, why not? I guess if we had hit the red source, they couldn't cast Iron Crag Feet. Uh, that might have been a huge punt, actually. I mean, to be honest, though, if they were casting Iron Crag Feet this turn, th in all likelihood, they would just be casting a Desperate Ritual into Iron Crag Feet, so it probably doesn't matter. Manamorphos. Okay. So they're probably just getting a Charbelter into their hand and then casting it, right? Another Manamorphos. Okay. They're just, uh... I, I don't know what they're doing. Yield through the turn. Standard at this point. Ritual. Cool, cool. Boil. Cool, cool, cool. I mean, our opponent will die to our Dryad. <laughs> Eventually. A Glass Pool Mimic. Looks like a land to me. And we can always yield Amulet at this point. We'll attack. We'll pass it back. Doing it the hard way. <laughs> Simeon Spirit Guide to block? Is that what it's come to? They don't even block. What? We're gonna get like neoformed or something here? Okay. Charbelter? Okay, okay, okay. <sighs> Growth chamber, huh? This is the face I make when there's absolutely nothing that we can even do here. Like what? Make some mana mimic copy dryad attack for to pass the turn, get dead to Charbelter, like... Okay, I mean... Let's attack. Maybe maybe we have a lightning bolt in our hand, opponent. We're gonna get you real good. Even that wouldn't win at this point. 
Okay, I don't know why our opponents stacked their deck in this particular way. They could have saved a lot of trouble by just putting Charbalter on top and then playing it and activating it. But, you know, uh, let's let our opponent do the thing. I'll be darned if I'm not getting this Glass Pool Mimic into play here. Even if Magic Online is being a little bit glitchy. We're going to get max, max amount of mana out of this Growth Chamber. That's uh that's the goal here. If my opponent is gonna make us sit here and wait while they kill us or stack their deck or whatever, I'm gonna take the time to cast a second dry out of the Elysian Grove. I think it's probably worth it. It's a it's a moral victory, you see. And uh we'll play Grazer as well. Just because it is the most powerful card in the deck. Pass it back. All right, opponent. Shoot me in the face. I'm ready to taste the shrapnel. Thirty nine cards. Well, I think we died. <laughs> you know what? We lost the Charbelter. And that is A-OK -okay with me. At least the strategy that our opponent is playing is very cool, making use of a very cool mechanic. I happen to like the mechanic myself, as these flip land cards are pretty impressive, so I'm not even mad. I am glad our opponent got to do the thing that they wanted to do when they sign up for the league, and I got to do what I wanted to do, which was play a sick deck list and at least get my value back. You know, the the, the three and two is Nothing I'll ever shake my head at. And, yeah. Let me know what you think of the deck. I happen to think it has a lot of ability here. I think that Core Surf Prefix is very nice. I don't know if it's a card that we should be playing in the quantity of four. I uh, could see some changes there. I also noticed, unfortunately, the lack of the Vesuva a couple times. Maybe it's just something that makes me feel more comfortable, but is not necessarily very functional. But I would feel more comfortable having a, a Vesuva in the deck as well. So let me think about some potential changes here, and I will get back to you guys in a second. All right, guys, so I have made a few changes, and I will discuss them now. But if I were to play this list again, which I may do in the future, so let me know if that's content that you're interested in. The list that I have arrived on is right in front of you, and the changes are as follows. We have added a copy of Vesuva to the main deck. We have moved the Ghost Quarter from the sideboard to the main board, as there were many times where I felt like a main board Ghost Quarter would have gotten us out of a few sticky situations, and we didn't have access to it, and stood to lose the game, if not did lose the game, for the lack of a Ghost Quarter. So I think that one is a good one to include in the main board. We also have removed the Tangled Floor Hedrons, and are instead playing Explore. When I initially explored this uh, ideology of playing all these flip lands as a way to play that artificially high land count that Amulet likes to play while also having things to do, I often found that Explore seemed like it did what Tangled Florhedron did, but better. As with Explore, you don't have to choose between ramping and getting your additional card out of it. Because Explore does both, whereas with Floorhedron, you either have the land or you have the Llanowar Elf, and there's nothing in between. Explore would help those kinds of hands that have, say, a Corsair Crew Fix, or uh, don't have a Bounce Land, or whatever it is that the hand might need, and getting the extra card draw from the Explore will allow you to edge a little closer towards that, um, that ideal hand that you might be looking for, or the extra draw that you might need to make a hand function, and that's something that I very much miss without Explore in the deck. And we also trimmed one copy of Recovery, as this one, consistently, from the very beginning, has proven to be the flip land, other than Symbiosis, of course, that I have found to be the best. There were several times where Recovery came in very clutch. For example, the match we just played, we were able to get back in the gate. In other matches, you're able to get back Summoner's Packs, or even just things that have made it to the graveyard in some other fashion. For example, your opponent Thought seizes your Primeval Titan, and you top deck a Balaged, and you get back the Primeval Titan, and the very turn after, you just go crazy and kill your opponent. 
And there are very few other cards that can function like Balagad, and I do think it is the best of the flip lands. Again, other than Turn Timber Symbiosis, the cards are kind of similar, but at the same time, they have very vast differences. So, And I will say I was impressed by Corsair. Uh, we did trim one copy here, as I think that if you have Corsair in your hand, you are not going to be needing a second one. Oh, actually, I missed a very big change as well, which is we are not playing any copies of Glasspool Mimic anymore. I was curious to try them out as an idea of having a bit of a heavier blue splash, maybe even trying to leverage a third Talari West if Mimic was good. That was something that was floating around in my head, but the vast majority of the time, Mimic felt like a liability. It frequently didn't do anything other than being an Into the Battlefield tapped blue land, and uh, there were several times where we cast a Mimic and ended up not being able to copy what we intended due to removal spells. The first time this happened, we ended up losing both the Mimic and our creature in play. And the second time, we ended up copying a Corsair that happened to already be on the battlefield and ended up winning that game, partially because of the presence of that Corsair on the battlefield. It's just, a, it's a little too um, polar, I suppose. Mimic is oftentimes pretty good, but also sometimes extremely bad. It's never a great top deck, in my opinion, and... It just didn't feel like a very strong card, especially compared to the steady consistency that Balged Recovery has shown, or Turn Timber Symbiosis, for example. I'm not really a big fan of Glasspool Mimic in this list. And then, for some of the room that we've made in the sideboard, we are now including two Beast Withins. The changes having been the Ghost Quarter went to the main deck right here from the sideboard. And I also decided to cut the Ramanop Excavator from the sideboard. It felt like a very cool, very tech kind of card that could do some very unique things. Like, for example, against Bluetron, it allowed us to replay our Ghost Quarter in the same turn that we activated it in order to cut our opponent off Tron. But I find that more often than not, the effect is not going to be worth it. That's why I don't usually play Excavator in my other amulet lists. And this list is not that particularly different, in all honesty. We also have a copy of Explosives. That's because I felt like this type of list could use some additional tools, I suppose, against the Death Shadow and aggressive, like, Red Prowess matchups. Yes, we do have Grazers and Explorers and Coursers, and we now are including a Mainboard Engineered Explosives as well, but I think that just having a maximum number of Explosives never hurts anybody, and it's always a very good sideboard card, so I'm happy to include the third copy here. Otherwise, I felt pretty solid about it, and I do think that there is some promise to playing these flip lands as an alternative to playing such a high land count, if that's something you're interested in. As we did find, this deck is easily able to uh, keep up in a top decking war because we have so many cards that not only help us top deck, like Corsair Prefix, but also cards that make for fantastic top decks, whether we're needing an additional mana source or we're just needing some kind of action. For example, Recovery or Turn Timber Symbiosis serving as redraws for getting back to Summoner's Pack or just putting a Titan straight into play, while also being able to provide us a uh, mana source or making us have a good choice for picking up with the Bounce Land, for example, to tuck away from discard early and get back later on. That kind of effect. There's definitely something, something oddly satisfying about playing these flip lands, and I think it's worth exploring. And if you agree with that, then let me know in the comments below, and perhaps I will continue to work on lists similar to this. Let me know also if you have been playing around with these flip cards, and if you have found a use for cards like Tangled Florahedron, or even other flip cards that I have not even touched yet. Let me know. And yeah, I don't really have anything else to say. I hope that you enjoyed it. I definitely did. And I will see you guys for the next league. This is Red Face Menace, signing off.